So warning, this presentation includes hard truths and hardware. So first we're gonna discuss the presentation. Um, there's a specific method to transmitting information. Uh, you can do it serious, expressive, or reflective. Um, we hope to cover all three in this presentation because the presentation is slightly dense, so it's based on delivery. Um, this presentation will talk about hard truths, a gap to this solution, and in relation to art because we're at the art stage. So we have two hard truths. One, influencers use the Web3 boom to capitalize their reach. And the second, they surmise that NFTs are too difficult to communicate. So what's the issue here? I believe in a sentence, in three words, NFTs are proverbial. Now, what does this mean? I'm gonna have a uh, slide with the, like basically a, a definition. You guys don't have to read it because I marked the one word that matters most. It has to be known. So the issue with um, communicating to even a widespread audience who don't necessarily want to scratch further than the surface is and always will be that there's an extra bit of information they must know in order to succeed either in the NFT or crypto Web3 space, any part of those spaces. So the difficulty here is that there's too much friction. So friction is not the pathway to ubiquity. How, what is the pathway to ubiquity? So if NFTs are proverbial, hardware is not. We're sitting in chairs. This is a real podium. This is a real light I brought. And so hardware is the solution to this gap because, and we're gonna cut into two previous talks, so I'm gonna pull information from, um, I spoke once in London and the pre at NFT, or sorry, London NFT, NYC. <laughs> and then the other one was in Miami the previous year. So we're covering two quick, quick, technical aspects to this. So the first presentation was on spatial computing. Second was on superordinate products. Uh, spatial computing means that in every single display, including our cell phones, this timer, and this slide deck, it has two axes. It has a Y and an X. It doesn't have Z. So as soon as you have Z, you're doing Z axis computing. All that means is you have depth now in a user, graphical user interface, or in other words, an application. The second, is a superordinate product such as, um, let's see, Facebook connects people, Apple has cell phones, Google lets you search an indexed version of the web so you can acquire knowledge. These are superordinate products because they're mass applicable. So hardware is the bridge solution here because hardware is tangible. And tangible things such as the chair you're sitting in aren't hard to comprehend, or at least they're easier for you to wrap your head around. So this is a break in the slides where I can like relax and now we're gonna transition from, that was a serious portion, a little bit tech heavy, to the more expressive portion. And just to give you an idea, I'll take a quick break here, of what we're talking about. Here's an early stage version of a smart glass, um, such as computers in the 1950s and 60s. They took up an entire room. You had to have punch cards. This is a device that takes up your whole head. So we're gonna get down there. You know, we have a computer in our pocket. We'll have thin lenses and, um, yeah. So, let's see. I'm gonna pause on this next slide. Because hardware is tangible, when we hand somebody a device, then they don't have to have all these mental leaps to figure out what blockchain is, um, what is the utility to having basically a shared backend, which is kind of what blockchain provides for all these tech companies is it's an outsource of their backend, um, which is basically their file keeping, bookkeeping system. And so, what is the relation to art? The trick here and the key word is ubiquity. So smart glasses will be ubiquitous. We all have cell phones in our pocket. Art is already ubiquitous. So if the goal is ubiquity, then these two things perfectly match. And this is how we can get um, basically mass adoption for NFTs, or at least what people now understand to be digital ownership. I do think that the word NFT has to a little bit drop off. Uh, even Facebook, when they integrated NFTs into their platform, they it called it in a subsetting on Instagram, digital collectibles. I'm not even certain that they still have that as part of their feature. Yeah, someone in the audience is saying, no, they don't. I think there's too much of a cognitive barrier 
So why not we go all the way down to the metal, all the way down to the firmware, and we build a product from the ground up that's related to crypto, or that's completely NFT native. So let's see, I think we're on the last couple slides here. I'd have to, okay. I'm gonna take a little bit more time here because I sped through all that. And I'm gonna double tap on one part of the presentation which was covered in Miami. Um, what this spatial computing paradigm does is it takes every single app that you already have on your cell phone, you can picture the uh, calculator or they used to have a flashlight app. Those probably won't work in the spatial computing paradigm. But you are able to retool all of these apps to be uh, more interactive and include depth. So we're gonna take really quickly the calendar. The way this device works is it has two mini, mini iPhone transparent screens. And what it's doing is it's able to, I'll hold it up while I'm talking so you have a visual aid. It's able to biomimic, looks like this from the side, so it's a completely see-through device. Uh, the devices we see on Facebook and, uh, I don't know, Apple's putting something out June 5th of this year, which is very exciting. Uh, it's the announcement for when they'll launch the product. These products are basically a tiny television strapped to your face that are light enough they don't hurt your neck. This is different. You can see all the way through it, and then the graphics are biomimicked to reality. So if you have two different images to two different eyes, your eyes actually see the same way. Your eyes actually see the world the same way. Because when you throw a ball to someone and it gets close enough to their face, if they flick one eye right back and forth, the ball looks like it's jumping. It's clearly not. I mean, it's stationary in front of your face. Let's say you're holding it up. It's, it's not moving. It's because you're receiving two different images to each eye. And these two different images are stereoscopic. So this is a stereoscopic device. Our compute platforms and mediums will shift to stereoscopic applications that are native, stereoscopic um, like based interfaces. And so I'm down to the last minute here. So I don't, hopefully I can like understand. So if you have like a calendar, you have an XY and a calendar, now you can have spatial calendars where like each chair is a new day in the year. And as you approach it, it's a proximity based interface. So as you approach it, your day springs up. And then the medium, the data visualization that's on the device is also three-dimensional. So you could have a bunch of cubes spring up, essentially. Um, so what binds it all together? We talked about one very important thing, which is the z-axis. Time. Time actually binds all this together. Once we, actually, once we put anything into three dimensions, it actually starts interacting with another domain, which is time. And that's what binds it all together to be continued. All right, that's my Twitter. Feel free to message me. <laughs> um, feel free to come check out the device. Again, it's just an early stage device. And thank you.